that we've learned the foundation topic about class diagrams, including inheritance and aggregation and composition and association, let's learn how to draw a class diagram using charts. You'll want to visit www.lucaschart.com and then you'll want to log into your account. That account should have been the account I've set up at the beginning of our class. Then click on Documents and then click on the down arrow on the document tab right here and you'll get to choose what type of document you want to create. If you notice right here we have a blank here mailbox. You also have use cases and sequence diagrams and other documents you might be making in Dr. Bonian's class. In our situation we're going to make a class diagram. So click on blank here mail and it will generate a blank document for us and provide us with the tools we need for working with ML. If you look off to the right or the left in our toolbox, you'll see we have uh, symbols to work with flow charting, containers, shapes, UML di class diagram, use cases, activity and state chart, sequence. Let's say that our parent class, team, had a property for the team name, and we wanted that to be public. We learned earlier that different symbols in the class diagram can represent different scopes. For example, a plus sign represents public, a minus sign represents private, and a pound sign represents protected. All you have to do is simply type that symbol in. Plus sign, team name. Then you can specify colon and then the type of data. We'll say that it's a string. What other attributes would every team have?
say that this class would be the subclass for soccer team. So we'll highlight the word class, type in the name soccer team. actually going to be called the game class. And in this game class, maybe the attributes we want to have in there could be um, private attributes, and we could say the home score of type int, and the visitor score of type int. come down here and actually write public getters and setters. We could say set home score, which would be a value. And we could even have a set visitor score, which receives a value. It doesn't return anything. And you could add whatever method you want here. We want to relate game to soccer team. Once again, we come to our game class. If you put your cursor on it, a red circle appears. Press and hold down your left mouse button and drag it to the other class. Then we could say, let's go ahead and add multiplicity. It automatically adds multiplicity for you. If you needed to change the direction and say soccer team um, includes the games, or game, the game has a soccer team, then we could actually reverse the line direction. In this case, we want to say soccer team has the game. If I want to change what the multiplicities look like, I simply come to the multiplicity, double click on it, and I could say zero dot dot one soccer team will have zero too many games. If I wanted to show the role for the classes and how they interact, then I could come over here, scroll up to the top of your toolbox, and you'll see a little text icon. Press and hold the left mouse button and drag that onto your diagram. Let go. And we could say soccer team has game. We could even come into here to our attributes and say Soccer team has a public or whatever scope you want to do, and we'll call it a list game, and we'll make that a list of game objects. Put it somewhere on your document, and then put your name. Save or save as when you choose. Sports teams. 